Hello class and Mr. Zabinden, and today I will be telling you all about the Dardanelles campaign. Let's begin. In the year of 1915, when the world was still young, a man by the name of Winston Churchill would devise a plan that, if successful, would knock the Ottoman Turks out of the Great War. Little did they know that this strategy would in fact be one of the worst mistakes the Allies would ever make. At the time, the plan seemed simple. The Allied ships would swiftly sail down the Dardanelles Strait, fending off any attacks from the Turks along the way. Once their fleet had reached the end of the 38 mile long waterway, they would capture Constantinople and ultimately knock the Turks out of the war. So in March of the same year, an armada of 12 old British ships, led by the famous and most sophisticated vessel called the Queen Elizabeth, began their underthought attack. At first, things seemed promising. The British were causing a heavy amount of damage to the Turkish mainland, and they were moving up the strait at a good pace. This will not last long though, for the Turks had picked up the pace themselves and began to lay some heavy fire on the British Navy. From both sides, the Ottomans ferociously attacked the British, and would soon force them to retreat. The carnage was not over though, for while on the way back, two British ships, two British ships hit mines that the Turks had placed in the middle of the sea. They both sunk in a matter of seconds and lost hundreds and hundreds of men. After this battle, it was made clear to the Allies that their navy and army must be combined to make this attack. So, on April 25th, 1915, 75,000 British, French, Australian, and New Zealand troops landed on the Gallipoli Peninsula. They fought hard, but had many casualties to the, due to poor leadership. The Turks were mowing them down at the beaches with their machine guns, but sooner or later they had a few soldiers make it up the ridge and take some ground. This would prove not enough though, for the Allies were still losing men by the thousands. Both sides dug trenches and began to fight that way, not even 10 yards apart. For the rest of April and most of May, this trench warfare continued and ultimately ended in a stalemate. No progress was made on either side and the stench of the dead began to drive the soldiers wild. Due to the conditions, the soldiers agreed to make a truce. So on May 24th, both sides marched up to no man's land and proceeded to bury their fallen soldiers. They would then proceed to shake hands, wish each other good luck in the future, and continue the carnage for another seven months. War is an interesting thing. Deep into the heart of winter, both armies now had another enemy to worry about, the cold. Not only were Allied troops dying due to the war, but now also due to weather. So they said enough was enough. There was no hope for them left in this battle and they evacuated the Gallipoli Peninsula. Ironically, the evacuation was the best executed part of the whole campaign. While this battle is seen as a major embarrassment for the Allies, it was a victory for the Ottoman Turks and was a building block for the war that won them their independence after the First World War had ended. The Battle of Gallipoli contributed little strategic advancement for either side whilst leaving a staggering number of dead on its battlefields. Yet the literature surrounding Gallipoli attests to its important role in shaping the national consciousness of those involved. Thank you.